so much. Yes! No, seriously though, welcome back. It's time for another cannon fodder, and I really just want to dive right in. This week is full of so much awesome that Creamed My Pants doesn't even come close to describing the nerdgasm I got when I finished reading this for the first time. This week is a lore fan's mental porn, so let's not waste any more time. To start, we get this awesome piece of art of a Sangheili in some hereto unseen armor variant, and I'm guessing it has to do with what comes next. As you know, Halo New Blood was released last week. Announced this week, we are getting more Halo books this year. Four more, to be exact. Fuck yeah! The titles are as follows. Halo Hunters in the Dark by Peter David. This is a full novel being released on June 16th, as if June wasn't a busy enough month already. I'm guessing that the art of the Sangheili Warrior is part of the cover of this book, but that's just my guess. Peter David is a writer who has dabbled in just about every sort of writing medium there is. He's done comics, he's done books, TV, movies, video games, you name it, he's done it. He's done work on Star Trek comics and novels, and worked on Babylon 5 and Young Justice. So, <laughs> hell yes. Now, working under the assumption that the piece of art at the start of this article is part of the cover for Hunters in the Dark, behind this Sangheili, we can clearly see the planetoid from the Ark that would be strip-mined to create new Halo rings. So, the lore buffs were right. We are going back to the Ark in some fashion this year. Of course, this doesn't mean it will happen in Halo 5 Guardians, nor do we know when this book is set. But still, it's exciting to think we're going back. Now, given how brief the Covenant's stay on the Ark was during the events of Halo 3, I'm going to guess this book is set in the post-war era. Perhaps this Sangheili is part of Thelvadam's Swords of Sanghelias, or some sort of artifact hunter for Jules' Covenant, or some other Covenant faction. Who knows, maybe he's even freelance. But I cannot wait to find out. Speaking of that particular Sangheili, let's talk about his armor. It's something we've never seen before, but it reminds me of two sets we've seen in the past. The one that came to mind first was the armor set used by the Stealth Elites in the Headhunter's Motion comic. The other armor was that used by Thel's team of Elites in Halo 2 Anniversary's Prologue and Epilogue, but that's only because it has a very similar color scheme. Other than that, I got nothing. Coming out on July 27th, another busy month, <laughs> is Halo Saint's Testimony, a digital single by franchise development director Frank O'Connor. Grimm sat down for a brief interview with Mr. O'Connor this week, giving us a little insight into what to expect. The book is told from the perspective of a less exposed, smart AI, but is said to be a character we're familiar with. He also notes that this is not an action epic, so I'm actually pretty excited. I love Halo's action, but some of the more subtle stuff is what really does it for me. The only thing that got me hesitant about this title was the use of the phrase, digital single. Is that to say that there are no plans for a physical copy? I sure hope not. On September 7th, we get Halo Last Light, a full novel by Troy Denning. Denning is a veteran author, having helped develop several D&D campaigns and books accompanying that fiction. He's also written for Star Wars, notably the New Jedi Order series. Finally, on December 7th, we're getting Halo, Shadow of Intent, by longtime Halo veteran and best-selling author, Joseph fucking Staten. That's right, former lead writer of the Halo franchise, Joseph Staten is returning to the Halo universe, and his book would seem to focus on the Shadow of Intent, flagship of the fleet of retribution commanded by Ultas Vadum. Holy fucking yes, Batman. We're getting four books, two by renowned authors, and two by Halo veterans, one of them Halo's former lead writer. How many fuck yeses can I give? It's a damn good time to be a Halo lore fan. Whew. So, when you're done soaking your pants in excitement, we move forward with the rest of the article. The next section is the aforementioned interview with Frank O'Connor. The big highlight was his brief bit on Halo Saints' testimony, but as always, I encourage you to check it out yourself. The article comes to a close with an announcement that fan screenshots from the Halo games on Xbox One will be used to help build the new gallery feature in Halo Universe entries. Oh yeah, there's a, there's a new gallery feature, but we'll get to that in due time. The images 343 are looking for, should have no UI elements, and should show the object or location in the best light. Let your picture-taking abilities shine and your image may be selected for addition to the gallery of a particular article. Keep an eye on Halo Waypoint for further details. That ends our article and brings us to the new universe entries. As if the book announcements weren't enough, this week's universe entries are... <laughs> well, you'll see. This week we have the T-26 Support Aircraft, or Banshee, the Human Colony of Alaria, Monitor of Installation 03049 Abject Testament, and the Metar Class Ancilla 05-032 Mendicant Bias. There's so much awesome this week. 
We start with the T26 Banshee. It would seem that the Banshee has had a long history with the Songheili, kind of a given, early versions used by Songheili Star Trekkers prior to their war and eventual union with the San Shayum. The Banshee's design is based on a leather-winged predator native to Songhelios, the Skeln. Fun fact, the Skeln was first mentioned in Halo Broken Circle. The earliest known Banshees are called the Uztet Skelen, after the beasts themselves. Some of these ancient Banshees still see limited modern use in ceremonial roles, often with elaborate ornamentation. Another Banshee variant known only from Covenant operational records is the Kezoi Asabu, or Obsidian Wing. It was built for stealth operations featuring active camouflage systems and sensor bafflers. I can't help but wonder if bafflers is more than a coincidence in this article. The Forerunners had a technology for camouflaging things known as bafflers. I can't help but wonder if maybe this system is derivative of that. A modern variant rarely seen through the war was an amphibious version that could be used for oceanic operations. The fact that this is so suddenly mentioned makes me wonder if 343 is hinting at something to come, either in the books or, perhaps more excitingly, in the games. The article closes with a section on the variants seen throughout the Halo titles. Basically, they're all canon variants. We have the T26A. This is the variation seen in Halo CE, Halo 2 slash Halo 2 Anniversary, and Halo Wars. The T26B. Said to be a more advanced version of the Banshee, this is the variation seen in Halo Reach, CEA, and Halo 4. According to the article, the T26 languished during the pre-war peacetime, only seeing widespread use towards the end of the war when stocks of older model Banshees were running low. The T26AZ. This is the variant scene used by the Heretics in Halo 2 slash 2 Anniversary's campaign, usually only seen with artifact hunting fleets. The T26BZ. This is the variant seen in Halo 2 Anniversary's multiplayer based on the T26B. Said to be an ordained variation, it is reported to have been the chosen model of Loka Bandoli, one of the soldiers deployed to the Threshold gas mine with Sessa Refumi. Next up we have the T26C. This is the variant seen in Halo 3 and probably the only one that actually bothers me. I just personally don't see a need to differentiate the variation seen in Halo 3 from the ones seen in Halo 2 and Halo 1, but that's just my opinion. Finally, the T-27 Exo-Atmospheric Multi-Role Fighter. This is the Banshee Fighter seen in Halo Reach's level, The Long Night of Solace. Funny enough, these are basically considered to be cannon fodder, acting as a screen for larger fighters or bombers. Next up, we have Olaria, the homeworld of Hai Salwari and Aris Lee, the subject of the cannon fodder from a couple weeks ago. I've gone over Olaria's history twice before on this channel, so I hope you don't mind if I skip this. The annotations on the screen will take you to those videos, or you can check the description box for the link to the Cannon Fodder article, and follow that to access Waypoint's article on Alaria. It's a good read, don't get me wrong, it's just, I've talked about it a lot. Next up is 049 Abject Testament, Monitor of Installation 03. We know that he wasn't present on the installation when humanity discovered it, nor when 859 Static Carillion made his way to Gamma Halo in 2557. While this article doesn't state outright what happened, it does shed a little light. As would be guessed, Testament ceased conducting his duties as a monitor sometime after the Halo Array fired. The Ring's archives show reports noting the poor state of the installation and 049's lack of action going back at least 20,000 years. I wonder if we may discover anything about 049 when Spartan Strike comes out. I doubt it, but here's hoping. Finally, the infamous 05-032 Mendicant Bias. First, of course, we get a semi-new image. Based on his appearance in Halo Legends, it's a bit more detailed than we've seen before and looks absolutely beautiful. The article itself is mostly repeat information. MB was created by the Didact and Master Builder, a joint effort, and charged with governing the original 12-ring Halo array. Later, he conversed with the Flood and turned against the Forerunners. His final battle with offensive bias saw his defeat and imprisonment on the Ark. Now, this is where it gets interesting. It would seem that MB was able to get a fragment of himself onto a key ship and headed to Earth, hoping to make amends for his crime. Unfortunately, that ship crashed on John Jer Quilm, and the rest is history. And that pretty much brings this week's cannon fodder to a close. So much awesome this week. Four new books, an awesome interview, new features on the universe articles, and four awesome new articles. Seriously, mental porn. Anyway, thanks as always for watching. This has been Hala Cannon. And I want to wish you all a happy St. Patrick's Day this upcoming Tuesday. Till next time, I'll leave you with a wee quote from Frank O'Connor. Everything you read this year is soil from which surprises will spring, many of them in Halo 5. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. It means more than I could express in a few minutes of audio. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share it around on whatever social media you see fit and all that jazz. 
Thank you so much. Your support is everything. I would not be where I am without you. Thanks.